Computex 2024 just wrapped up, we're finally back in town, and we got to see firsthand all of the major chip announcements from brands like Intel and AMD revealing their new impressive chips to compete with Apple Silicon and Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Elite. So in this video, I'm gonna answer a bunch of questions like which brand surprised us the most and why, as well as which laptop chip I think is gonna be the winner throughout the end of this year after Computex. So before I get started, I want to lay out the competition. First of all, we have the Snapdragon X Elite, which is coming in less than two weeks, which is going to give them a big advantage compared to everybody else. And then AMD has their new Strix Point Ryzen HX370 launching in July. Then we have Intel launching a single SKU Lunar Lake SOC, which is really cool for the first time. That's going to happen in either the third or fourth quarter. And then of course, Apple has their M4 chip, which is already in the iPad Pro, but won't be going into laptops until later this fall. Now getting started, the biggest surprise was definitely from Intel with their new Lunar Lake SoC for laptops. My idea this year was that this was gonna be the year that x86 would be basically screwed and entirely pushed out of the market by the new X Elite, coming in with incredible battery life gains for Windows laptops, finally competing with Apple's M3 and upcoming M4 laptops later this year. But Intel came in and shocked me by completely redesigning and revolutionizing everything about their laptop chip with a massive focus on efficiency. They basically swallowed their pride in multiple ways and they essentially copied Apple's strategy in so many different ways, which shows that Apple knew what they were doing when they announced the M1 four years ago. And looking at the Lunar Lake chip, it's basically a copy of the M1 with onboard memory, which they're doing for the first time ever on an Intel chip, which is exactly what Apple did with their M1 with the soldered on RAM chips, which really shocked me because Intel's basically conceding to Apple's strategy and giving up on user upgradable RAM, so basically Apple was right. They also downgraded the core count from up to 14 cores with Meteor Lake down to only eight with four P cores and four E cores, just like Apple's M1 through M3 chips with the M4 now having 10 cores. So Intel is sacrificing raw power for efficiency and battery life gains with a huge focus on the e-cores running as many tasks as possible with their new thread director changes. And these e-cores are completely redesigned from the ground up, basically making them powerful mid-range cores, seeing as the p-cores are only up to 50% faster. Intel even sacrificed their Intel 4 process node and switched over to TSMC's N3B node which is exactly what Apple is using for the M3 chip. So Intel is pulling out all stops to compete with these new ARM chips in terms of battery life. Intel did show off a wildlife GPU benchmark with the Lunar Lake GPU using 35% less power, which is really impressive, but that's also likely due to them switching to the new three nanometer node on their compute tile. So their GPU is going from basically six nanometers to three, which is a huge physical upgrade. But the big point is that they're still using the x86 architecture, which I think they will eventually have to give up to compete even further. So I don't know what's going on with their purchase of Sci-5, who makes RISC-V chips. But based on everything that Intel showed me at their Intel tech tour that we got to take part in, it looks like x86 is gonna be just fine for the next few years to help Intel compete in the laptop space in terms of battery life, but probably not performance, as I'm gonna show you in a second. So now let's talk about how all of these new chips compare. In terms of the NPU performance, AMD gave us this nice little chart comparing all of them, but keep in mind that Intel is actually sitting at 48 tops right now, so it's right behind AMD's 50 tops, and all of them beat Apple's M3 and M4, which has only 38 tops. Now, while in Taipei, I did speak to Max Weinbach, and he showed me some benchmarks that Microsoft set up for him showing that the X Elite outperforms the M3 in a certain AI task while using a lot 
less power. Now, the M3 has about 36 tops of int 8. The M4 has 38, so it's a little bit faster. So it's going to be interesting to see if it can compete in terms of performance, and it also matters on the task. But basically, he says that each task is different, and there are so many different variables in terms of software optimization. So the raw NPU tops numbers don't even really matter that much. And in reality, we have to wait for all these chips to get released, and we have to test them to see which ones will be the fastest. But in terms of total platform tops, the Lunar Lake chip from Intel is the fastest with 120, including 67 from the GPU, compared to the AMD Strix Point, which has 80, with 50 from the NPU and 30 from the GPU. So it's going to be interesting to see which one is the best AI chip when they all come out. Now, in terms of single core performance, Apple is obviously still the king across all of these chips, with their M4 having the best IPC. And we can figure out the single core numbers by taking the previous single core scores from each chip and then increasing them by the single thread IPC gains. And Apple is still on top with Intel and Qualcomm trailing behind. And then in terms of multi-core performance, I think the AMD chip will be by far the fastest beating out all of the competing chips this year, including from Intel, which of course they downgraded to only eight cores. And we know that AMD showed off that their new HX370 chip is 30% faster than the X Elite in Cinebench 2024. And at the ACES event, we also saw a chart that showed this new chip being 15% faster than the unbinned 12 core M3 Pro chip from Apple, which is really impressive. Now, of course, there's also the M3 Max, which is obviously faster, but that's in a whole nother league compared to these thin and light mobile chips, but it's definitely the fastest. Now, in terms of raw graphics power, I think it's gonna be either the Lunar Lake Intel or the AMD HX370. Seeing as AMD said that their chip is about 40 to 73% faster than Meteor Lake, but Intel also said that Lunar Lake is about 50% faster than Meteor Lake, so it's gonna be close, especially since Lunar Lake does have 67 tops for their GPU compared to 30 for the AMD chip, so it should be faster for AI workloads. Out of all the chips, the X Elite definitely has the slowest GPU based on 3D Mark tests from Signal 65, showing that the M3 chip is 31% faster than the X Elite and also in Blender rendering as well, so it's far behind the new M4 chip and the rest of the pack. So now, with that said, let me sum up the biggest pros and cons of each new chip. As far as the new X Elite, the biggest pro is that we finally got very compelling CPU performance while also getting really impressive battery life thanks to this being an ARM-based design, even with just 12 performance cores and no E cores, since they can just clock down and be more efficient. But the biggest con is that we might not have the best Windows software support due to it being the first good mainstream Windows ARM chip where it'll need to emulate apps, which will likely take extra power, so it's a bit iffy for now. Now, in terms of AMD, the biggest advantage of the new HX370 chip is that they're still pushing very hard for high performance across the board, so it'll likely be the hottest chip and will have the worst battery life, so it's a more traditional x86 chip that'll take the higher end of the laptop market, especially since they're still making laptops with this chip and NVIDIA GPUs, so that's mostly for all of the gamers out there. The new Lunar Lake chip is great since they're still showing impressive CPU and integrated GPU numbers, as well as the highest level of total platform tops. So it's going to be a really, really good chip for thin and light Windows laptops. The biggest benefit is that it's still an x86 chip, so it's going to be by far the most compatible with no emulation, no issues with software, no issues with apps, while also being fully redesigned with efficiency in mind. So it'll likely be the best non-ARM based chip we've ever seen for laptops. So it'll be a good option for thin and light 
Windows mobile laptops this year. And finally, we have Apple's M4 MacBooks, which are great all around from the GPU to the CPU. They have the best single core performance by far, which is gonna make it feel very snappy while benefiting from Apple's incredible software optimization with macOS and still featuring great performance and battery life all around. And now in terms of which chip I think is gonna be best later this year, I honestly believe we're gonna see a huge spike in sales for the Snapdragon X Elite laptops this summer being an overall really great option. Let's cross our fingers because we don't know how the software is gonna work just yet, but I think it's gonna be pretty good. And then later this year, I think Lunar Lake is gonna surprise everybody with really good battery life, but not necessarily the performance where AMD is going to hold the crown, especially for gamers. And finally, we're gonna have Apple's higher end M4 Pro and Max chips, which are gonna dominate in terms of ARM-based performance laptops, but of course limited to macOS. So yeah, those are all of the chips that are announced and we're expecting later this year. I think this is gonna be the best year in terms of laptop innovation in many, many, many years. I've been waiting for this year for so long, ever since the M1 chip came out. This is finally very, very exciting in the laptop space. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and definitely get subscribed above and check out one of those two videos right there, including the Lunar Lake Chip deep dive video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.